CMI is your full-service human resources provider in Central Kentucky. For 15 years, CMI Human Resources has taken great pride in helping organizations and people work. Whether it's employee handbooks or help in filling a position, no job is too large or too small for CMI. Contact the professionals today at CMI Human Resources, 859-296-2800 or online at cmiconsulting.com. Good afternoon. Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn, and glad that you joined us today. And just so excited here as we start our third month of Hope is Here. And people have been just so good to help support this ministry, this program. And I want to thank all the people that support it. And if you're like, you know what, I'd like to make a contribution, uh, you can go to our website, Hope is Here. Today. And you'll see a donate button, and uh, any donation would be greatly appreciated as uh, we pay for the radio airtime, then obviously uh, to get the podcast edited and for website and all that. So uh, it would be great if all this was free, but it's not. But I'm so thankful that God has uh, provided uh, resources through many generous people. And if you'd like to be a part of that, if you're being blessed by this program, uh, please go online today at hopeishere.today and make a donation. Also, I uh, want to remind you, if you missed any of our programs, you can go to our website, hopeishere.today, and catch any of those. We've had so many great guests, and I'm just so thankful for so many people that have taken time out of their busy schedules to be a part of what God is doing on hopeishere.today. Well, I just got back recently from uh, Austin, Texas, visiting my brother Darren and his family. Uh, Darren is assistant basketball coach for the men's basketball team at the University of Texas. And I love basketball. It's my favorite sport. And uh, you just learn so many things from sports uh, about being a team, about being selfless, uh, sacrificing, uh, hustle, uh, being humble. And most of all, I think you learn how to overcome defeat. Uh, They play over... 30 games a year and have several losses and you know it's just such a great example of what life's going to be and for these young men that play on their team they not only want to teach them about the game of basketball but they want to teach them about the game of life and how to balance academics and how to balance athletics and how to eat properly and get sleep and how to treat people and just so many things that are important to becoming a a person that's able to function well in our society and so it was a great weekend but as I was flying back on the airplane I was thinking about what would I have on our program this week and you know I just felt like a lot of you are just discouraged uh, a lot of people uh, end of January's come February started and you're like you know 2018 is not any different than 2017 was and uh, same old problems, same financial struggles, uh, pants still too tight, uh, haven't lost any weight. In fact, maybe uh, some of you, have, you, you've gained weight and you're just really discouraged. Same family relationships, uh, not going well, or maybe you're single and you're alone or uh, you've lost a spouse or a significant other uh, last year and you just feel really lonely. You're just discouraged. And uh, I just want to remind you today that God loves you. I know that's so simple, but uh, I think sometimes we really do forget it because we we just are comparing about the things that we don't have and also about just our feelings and how, how we feel and if we're hurting. And, you know, uh, the Bible says to weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who rejoice. And maybe for some of you right now, uh, it's truly a winter season. It's dark and it's lonely and it's cold. And uh, I just felt like simply today that I wanted to remind you that God loves you. And I'm so thankful to know that God is still on his throne. Uh, As I've shared with you back one of the first programs we did back in early December that uh, when my brother Darren uh, was let go as the University of South Carolina's head basketball coach, uh, he sent me a text just minutes after it happened, after meeting with the athletic director, and just said, simply, I got let go, I'm okay, and God is still on the throne. And uh, I just want to remind you that today, that maybe some of you don't sense that. Maybe most of all, you don't feel that. But I want to remind you that God is still on the throne and that he hears you and that he cares about you. And one of the things that's so hard for me to do, but I've been taught it so many times over the 50 plus years of my life, and it's to praise God even when we don't feel like it, but just to praise him and thank him for who he is and that he is our protector and our provider. I want to encourage you to do that today. I know a lot of you probably don't feel like it, and it sounds crazy. It really does. It just doesn't sound rational. But there's something about just praising our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, even when we don't 
feel like it, that helps bring peace and helps bring us into a deeper relationship with him. And my dad modeled this so well, as I've shared so many times, my dad didn't become a follower of Jesus till he was 50, and uh, it'll be two years this mo- upcoming March in 2018 that he's gone to be with Jesus. But the last 24 years of his life, wow, he just every day desired to be in a deeper relationship with Jesus. And one of the ways he would pray, uh, if I was over at their house for dinner sometimes, I'd just be my mom and I uh, having dinner together, us three, and he would just simply open prayer and say, Lord, Thank you for loving me. And he would start to kind of get emotional. Uh, He was just so grateful for how much God loved him and that he had sent his one and only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for him. And uh, he would just say, thank you for my family. Thank you for my wife. Thank you for my precious children and my grandchildren. And thank you just for the many, many blessings that you've given me. And he was just so thankful and humbled how much God loved him. And for some of us today, maybe it's just a reminder that you just need to thank God for loving you. And even though you may be in some storms right now, if you take a second just to think about it, maybe thank him for all the storms that he has gotten you out of. And sometimes I'm guilty of that. Uh, We live in a culture that it's, what have you done for me lately? And sometimes we want to forget that even though we may be struggling, that God has just time after time provided for us. And the big thing is sometimes it may not have been in the ways that we expected, that we hoped for, and maybe even prayed for, yet God did provide. He took care and got us to the other side of whatever situation we were dealing with. And another thing that my dad used to do uh, as he became more mature in his relationship with Christ in the last, I'd say, four or five years of his life, in his 70s, when I get ready to get off the phone with him, and we talked three or four times a week, so my dad and I were best friends. He just was a great, great dad, but just a great man, a great friend. We could talk sports. We could talk business. We could talk Jesus, uh, just life. And one of the things he would tell me uh, before we got on the phone, he'd say, son? I'd say, yes, dad. Thinking maybe there's something I could help him with. He just would pause. He'd say, son? And I'd say, yes, sir. He said, remember, you're loved and you're blessed. And, you know, that was so powerful to me. And, man, I miss that so much today. And, you know, he didn't have a father that told him that. Some of you think, well, you know, you're really lucky you had a dad like that, and and I am. Um, Didn't do that to the last four or five years of his life, but uh, I'm so thankful. And some of you know have never heard that. And yet I want to remind you, if you're a follower of Jesus today, that you are loved and you are blessed. And you say, you know, well, Greg, how do you know that? Well, Simply, John 3.16, we'll see you at the Super Bowl. Uh, You probably saw it at the Super Bowl by the time you uh, hear this program that, um, you know, God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And I know it's where my dad is that he's gone from earth, but he's not gone forever. He's with Jesus, and I'll see him again one day, but it doesn't help the pain missing just wanting wisdom from him or watching a Texas basketball game with him or asking uh, what we think uh, UK's coach ought to do differently, whether it's football or basketball and talking business and uh, just life in general and maybe something that God has shared with one of us uh, and sharing it with the other. But you know what? Uh, I know that God loves me, and I want to remind you that God loves you, and he modeled that in John three sixteen by giving his best his one and only son. And uh, I just want to remind you that God loves you and he cares about you. And uh, the Bible promises that he never leaves us. He never forsakes us. And just because you can't feel him or maybe you can't see him right now, I just want to encourage you to to know that and to trust him and to praise him. And uh, a friend of mine recently uh, lost his mom and she had struggled with Alzheimer's and um, several years, and just really had a very, very low level of life. Just you know, just she was there in body, but not mind, and it just really painful for him to see that. And um, but she did die recently, and you know, my brothers and I were talking on the trip in Austin that uh, as much as we miss Dad, we're just so thankful that he didn't suffer from Alzheimer's, which his mom actually did suffer from, and that's what she ended up dying from, and cancer is so many people suffer with cancer and 
It's interesting since I've got back from that trip, I've had three different people contact me about their dads having major health challenges and uh, said, I knew you would understand that you would pray for me. And so, you know, God never wastes a hurt in our lives, and we just have to choose whether we're going to use it to have it to be a blessing to help others, and uh, maybe your scars can become someone else's stars. And, uh, you know, I also love the scripture. It says that weeping endures for a night. The joy comes in the morning, and Wayne Smith used to use that scripture at Southland Christian when I went there in college, and he would say it with tears as he told about just a gut-wrenching story of somebody losing a precious child or loved one unexpectedly or way too early for um, time on this earth to be over. And so I uh, just want to remind you that God loves you even through the tears. He's not forgotten you. And, man, if I can pray for you, uh, gosh, send me an email. Uh, it's simply greg at Hope is here. Dot today, uh, our Facebook message. Uh, you can go to our Facebook page. Hope is here, and uh, there's a message place on there. Send a message with your prayer request. Would love to be able to pray for you and encourage you with whatever's going on. And you say, well, Greg, you also said your dad said that you were blessed. And you know, I'm not talking necessarily blessed financially. Uh, God loves to bless His kids, uh, no doubt about that. But that I'm loved and that no matter what the world says about me or what successes or failures that I have professionally or personally, that I'm blessed because I am a child of the King, the Most High God of Jesus Christ. I love Philippians 4.19 and uh, the last five years it's kind of been my go-to verse financially as I've uh, been self-employed for the most part or worked a couple of part-time jobs. I mean, a campus pastor at a church, uh, working at a nonprofit, doing lots of radio work uh, for Georgetown College, Lexington Christian Academy, uh, doing some things with Asbury. Just God's really blessed me, but uh, it's been by faith sometimes. And Philippians 419 has really helped me. I've got it written on a post-it note and stuck in the dashboard of my car. And it simply says, and my God will meet all your needs according to his glory in Christ Jesus. And I love it doesn't say most of my needs, some of my needs, but all of my needs, according to his glory, his riches in Christ Jesus. And, you know, here's the key thing about that. It says my needs. And, you know, there's a big difference between wants and needs. And I have lots of uh, wants, but if I'm really honest, at the end of the day, I really don't have much needs. Uh, I'd like a newer car. Mine's nine years old. It's got a big rust spot on the one of the doors uh, where I was not doing a good job driving. But uh, you know what? It's paid for, and uh, it's got over 160,000 miles, but it's running right now. And so God has provided for me. And uh, I've been praying that, you know, when I'm going to need another car and hoping to be able to get one maybe next year in 2019. But right now, he has provided. It is a need to have transportation. I'm not missing food. I have shelter. If you've got all of those things, uh, you're blessed. You really, really are. We live in a country where we're free to worship Jesus. Uh, if you've got friends, um, I struggle with loneliness sometimes. I'll be honest with you about that. And yet... Uh, I try to, if I can, reach out to others and let them know that I care about them. And so uh, just know that you can still be blessed and praise God even when you don't feel like it. And in return, you will be blessed. Well, that's going to wrap up our program today. I hope you'll join us tomorrow at 1245 p.m. for Hope is Here. Let's be honest. Medicare can be really confusing. Scott County resident Jason Biddle has over 17 years helping seniors and retirees with issues surrounding Medicare, health care, and Social Security. Don't give yourself a headache. Contact Jason Biddle today with any insurance questions you have related to Medicare, health care, and Social Security. Contact Jason today for help at 502-395-1603. That's 502-395-1603.